Hey, Amanda, thanks for uh, meeting again to discuss uh, some great topics relating to mortgages and the environment today. No problem. Thanks for having me, John. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, last week we talked briefly about needing less of a down payment and uh, needing uh, less closing costs uh, mm. for the same house from February compared to now. So um, uh, what are some numbers you can share with us based on uh, mm -hmm. that time difference? Absolutely. So I need some notes here. That's why I'm looking down. So basically I ran it as if a property in February would have cost somebody around the $1.3 million mark. And then now the price is going down is probably around the $1.1 million mark. In February, a buyer would have need for their down payment and their closing costs. So closing costs for the consideration of Toronto land transfer tax, legal fees, and a small surplus in case any expenses come up. So back in February, a buyer would have needed $310,000 as their down payment. Now, if they were to buy the same home for a purchase price of $1.1, the total down payment needed would be $260,000. So it's actually $50,000 less that a buyer would have to have saved in order to buy a similar or the same home back in February. Okay, uh, great numbers. Thanks for running those. And for a buyer putting less than 20% down, uh, have you seen any difference in their ability to qualify? Surprisingly, yes. So a lot of my clients here are risk averse. We've been talking about the two-year fix for the last little bit. And I was actually looking back at what I was doing for two-year fix back in June, and the rate was actually at a 4.99%. We've now seen that actually come down to 4.59%. So that's actually qualifying when you think of the stress test on a lower rate of 0 0.30. For instance, on a client I ran numbers for yesterday, it took their pre-approval amount from 950,000 up to 999,000, which is the absolute max you could purchase when you're putting less than 20% down. Payment. All right, uh, great numbers again. And uh, when someone is getting pre-qualified, what are the steps? Yeah, absolutely. So when we're looking at a pre-qualification, we use a system, um, not everybody, but as Brian Groove in particular, we use a system called LenderKey. LenderKey is an amazing tool. It's an online mortgage application, as well as a document collector. So what we do is, well, how I personally do it is after I have my initiation phone call with my client, I'll email them over the link for lender key so they're able to sign on to the online portal. From there, we'll have a list of documentation we require. So letter of employment, pay stubs, down payment documents. It's obviously a little bit different for each person because everyone, no two scenarios are the same. Um, so once they upload the documentation we need, as well as the application portion of lender key, then we'll put all our numbers together to figure out their unique situation. Like I just said a couple seconds ago, no two situations are the same. So I never have a cookie cutter mortgage. We customize everyone's mortgage needs in particular. Awesome. Well, such great advice and information again uh, from you, Amanda. Thank you so much and look forward to talking to you next. Yeah, thanks, John. And have a great week. You too. I know.